Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. And if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today is a very special episode. Today I bring on our co-host, uh, Kamar Zaman. For those of you that have been watching this series or listening to this series, depending where you're at, Kamar has been going through a master class on uh, different marketing areas and techniques and things that business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives need to know. Today's episode, we will be covering a part two in the series of uh, writing content that ranks on Google. If you haven't watched part one, I suggest you go back and watch part one after after listening to this one but just get this kicked off kamar welcome back on the show thank you for having me again and this is episode number eight so i'm all fired up oh man episode number eight time flies when you're having fun it seems like just the other day we were doing episode number one so love to see when the idea turns into reality and uh, the, the, the responses the reviews we've gotten back from this people are getting a lot of value so we do appreciate you putting this together for us and just for those that haven't been following the the, uh, the other episodes and this is the first one for the series they're catching tell everyone a little bit more about what you're doing over at kiss pr so they have a feel for your background Sure. So I'm the chief growth officer at KISS PR, not the CEO, I'm the chief growth officer. And my job is to grow other people's business. So typical, I get a call, clients want SEO, they want blog. And I said, well, let's forget all of that. Let's grow your business. So we come up with a phrase called whatever we do goes your business. So that's hence my title, chief growth officer. Fantastic. Uh, all right. Well, let's just let's just dive right into today's topic. So, writing content that ranks on Google, episode uh, second part of the series. Uh, where do you want to start with this one? Okay. So, Adam, I just want to recap some of the things that we said. So, for context, they can understand this if somebody hasn't watched or listened to our first episode. So, if you remember, the first episode was how to write website content that ranks for Google. Now. We were very specific. Uh, we didn't say how to just write content. We were saying how to write website content because the content is broken down into website. It's broken down into press release. It's broken down into blogs. It's broken down into Twitter. So we we were actually explaining how to write your website content, which basically is your web page. So when you write a web page, you have to structure the web page in a certain way. So the web page starts to be favored by Google and it gets to be liked by Google. If it's liked by Google, it will rank organically without you have to do a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. So just to recap, we talked about the web page. We talked about what the web page it need to have. It needed to have a headline. It needed to have a body of text that was broken down into bullet points so it's easy to consume. For somebody, it should also have frequently asked questions, what I call SAQs, or should ask questions. And at the end, we had an offer saying that, you know, why should they do business with you? And so that was, so I definitely encourage people to go and look at that because if they don't, they would not understand the step number two. And it's important that mm. they follow the plan. Now, one thing I say that is that we do whatever we say or whatever we claim, we drink the same Kool-Aid, right? Right. So so if you type how to write website content that ranks on Google, 
there are 84 million pages competing for this term. And there are ads running, but if you type yourself in front of the computer, how to write website content that ranks on Google, we are actually, in one week, we are on the first page of Google, competing with some of the top guys, top guns in the digital marketing, mm -hmm. like Neil Patel, and missionmatters.com, how to write website content that ranks on Google is actually there. So we did something special, you know, after the podcast. So after you posted it, it is there. So what we are teaching you is actually working as we speak. So now we want to go into step two. Now, once you have a web page, you have written the content, and now you have put it up. Who's actually going to find you? Because that's the challenge. You know what? I have great websites. I have a web page that talks about what I do, but people are not going to find me. So the finding of the things is created through what we call content amplification. Mission Matters is all about that. You amplify people's you know, stories. So content amplification or amplification is an important part. So I want you to visualize that you have a page of content. In the last example, we were talking about right. divorce lawyer in LA, right? So you have that page that talks about divorce lawyer in LA. Now, how are people going to find you? So the, that piece of content, it's called a blog. So you need to write a blog that would help your web page, your website to be found. Now. It's not as simple as, you know, just write one blog and do it. So I want you to imagine three jars, and I'm going to break it down into how I teach kids, right? So yeah. you take three jars, and in one jar, you would put yellow bubble gum or yellow gummy bears. Let's make it gummy bears, right? So yellow <laughs> I like, I like this bears. example, Kamar. <laughs> yeah. This is getting so, good. Go ahead. Yellow gummy bears, right? In yeah. the next jar, we want to put red gummy bears, and in the third jar, we want to put green gummy bears, okay? Yellow, red, and green. So imagine this example of gummy bears. Why yellow? Yellow is not important here, but I'm keeping it simple that if you have a kid that's, that's going to go and go for gummy bears, she or he is going to go in the jar and they're going to start searching and they're going to dirty with, you know, all the gummy bears with the hand. So why not just give them yellow? So if you're interested in yellow, go to yellow. If, you're, if you like red, you go to red. If you want green, mm -hmm. go to green. Okay. Now think from, so now change your thinking to come back to the content. If you want to write about, you know, divorce, in other words, since you're talking about the divorce lawyer, if you're mm -hmm. to talk about divorce, put all your content that you would come up for addressing divorce into a jar. And let's make that yellow, okay? Have a second jar and that make that red and that could be child custody. And have a third jar that could talk about, you know, business. If you have a business, you know, and you are divorcing your partner. Those three different things are three different jars of content that you have to create, you know. So then what you do, you go to, obviously in the jar you have multiple gummy bears. Now you have to think about, well, these in the jars, what am I gonna put? For divorce, what am I gonna put? So what you do, mm -hmm. you think about now, Imagine that you are going to buy a car. You and Shirag are going to buy the next big $100,000 car that you have planned to buy for the company or for both of you. Both of you are going to buy a car. And you are upgrading from your old car to the new car. So what is the things that you're going to do? You're going to make a list of the questions that you're going to go to the dealership because last time you bought the car, five years ago, you went through so much hassle. The guys were just lying to you. So you make a list of the questions that you are going to go and ask those salespeople exactly things that are top of your mind, things that bothered you. I don't want to sit at 
half an hour with the finance guy. I want to know mm-hmm. exactly what I'm getting. You know, those things are what I call pain points, okay? Pain points. Mm-hmm. So you put all those pain points in your jar of divorce, and then you start addressing those as you go to a divorce lawyer. You go start addressing, okay, Mr. Divorce Lawyer, Last time I talked to a divorce attorney, they were giving me, they were all over the map. They were just giving me too much information. I didn't understand that. I need you to answer these following questions about my divorce. Okay? So Mm -hmm. you take those and you put it all in a divorce. Now, the second question, if you have any kids, you will have a second, if you're taking a, you know, like an iPad or the yellow book or whatever, you're going to write a separate page for child custody. And mm-hmm. then if your business is in divorce, then you're going to say, well, okay, well, I'm, I'm also divorcing and, you know, my partner works with me. How am I going to divorce this? So you're going to put all those separate questions in the third jar, i.e. the business in divorce. Now you start addressing those questions and start asking. So imagine that, okay, customer comes to you. They have questions about divorce. Before they come to you, they are searching on the internet. They're not going to call you right away and say, hey, I have all those questions. You're going to ask them, oh, I can't give you all those answers. Come to my office. Mm -hmm. What if those answers were available about the divorce? So I'll, I'll give you a perfect example here of a client that we recently worked with, and he happens to be a divorce lawyer in L.A., so we came up with a topic, what questions should you ask a divorce attorney on the first visit, right? So mm-hmm. that is what we call a divorce FAQ. And that included subtopics like communication, et cetera. So the, the questions that we came up with, questions you ask a divorce attorney on the first visit are, how often will you communicate to me? Because while the lawyers are great in doing they are the worst in communication because I work with them. They think they're doing the job, but they're not good at communicating. As a result, the customer on the other side is really getting frustrated. So the first question I asked the divorce lawyer is, you know, how often will you communicate? And he put that answer right there. That becomes your answer in the divorce jar. The second Mm -hmm. is, how will you communicate with each other? What communication should I have with my spouse about this divorce as this is going on. So you put all of those things together and now you are going to write your first piece of content from that jar. In other words, now you have put all your questions in the jar or in the gummy bear example, you have put 10 gummy bears, you're now starting to pick one and eat them and enjoy them. So what I'm going to teach you is today, how do you write your very first piece of content, i.e. the blog, from that content jar that would help your website to start to rank and Mm -hmm. become first page on Google. So the very first thing we want to do is step one, and the only step you should do at that time without getting distracted is, who is your perfect audience? If you're not talking to the right person, you're talking to everybody, and then you're all over the map. So I call it the avatar. Who is the avatar? So if you're a divorce attorney, who is your avatar? Person that is looking for an attorney, either their friend or husband and wife, and your perfect avatar is people that are looking for divorce. So you want to address that avatar. So you want to do some research, you know, So the attorney is going to think, well, I know my avatar, but what can I do to find some good research on the Internet to see, well, what should I be writing about? So I'll give you two tips here. What you do is you come up with that question that you have is like, you know, how much does it cost to divorce in L.A.? That's your question. What you do is you put that question in Google and then scroll all the way from top top result one to top result 10, you look at what other people have done. So you kind of get an idea what other people are doing. And at the end, 
you will see those related searches. What are the related terms those people are using in their question? So now you want to take a piece of paper, you start to write all those 10 questions that other people did, and what you do is you make a list of them. You know, you're not writing your content yet. You're making a list of your competitors, what other people have done, and now you're going to start to add keywords or list of terms that are in related searches. So that, that gives you what to write and what terms to use. But what is your audience? Because we are addressing the audience. What you do is you go to Facebook and Facebook has a tool and you can do a Google search on Facebook audience tool. So you go to Facebook mm -hmm. audience tool, do a Google search, you put your city, Los Angeles or Beverly Hills, wherever you are, and you type the word divorce attorney. And it would show you the demographic, psychographic, age, etc. You know, it'll give you everything that is available in LA. How many people are actually in Facebook looking and having conversation about divorce? Now, that is a broad data, but it's good data that you never had before. So now you right. know the divorce people are looking between 30s and 45s so or maybe 70, I don't know. You know, they are all in L.A. County and they are all male and they drive Mercedes Benz. So now you have a great idea because Facebook gives you all the data that Google does not give you. It's the perfect audience. You take that, you put it on, and now you start thinking. If your audience is the rich people, obviously in Beverly Hills, all these people are rich. You want to write the tone of the voice has to be addressing them. If you are going into a county where there's a lot of poor people, they don't have the money, then you write for them, right? So that is your first audience map. That's the very first thing you want to do. Any questions so far? Where do you find people like kind of trip up on making these audience maps? Like what's the com? I know, uh, you know, a lot of different variations, but what's a common pitfall that you see? The the pitfall in audience map is that they they just go to broad you know mm. and they they are that's what i was thinking by the way i've made that mistake personally i've made yeah. that mistake yeah. admission matters and other businesses i've run in the past like i've gone too broad because you feel like oh well i'm forgetting this or i'm leaving this out or this or that but this is the opposite of doing that like to get that data yeah, you well, want to target am i, I, am I'll I right give you, absolutely i'll give you a perfect example i was on a call this morning at nine with a client in canada we are trying to teach them their target market. They have just started. They they don't they have one website. They don't have a blog yet. And I'm telling them that let's go. We are in September. Let's go write the first blog on schools because schools are opening up. Let's talk about the air quality in schools. Guess what they want? Mm -hmm. They want to cover everything. They want to cover the entire Canada. I said for what? It says we want to do everything from hospitals to restaurants to. I said but. That's too broad. Like when you go too broad, who's your audience? Nobody. Nobody. As a result, <laughs> you're competing in ocean. I call it, and you know this book called The Blue Ocean Strategy. You are fishing in a red ocean. You know, just go mm. to the place where there is low-hanging fruit. So to answer your question, people go too broad, and then they spend too much time, and they think Internet doesn't work. Hmm. Yeah. That's so. That's so good. That's such a. That's such a a good example. Look, continue going. I that was. I was just thinking about like what's the mistake. Continue, please. Okay. So now, as you as I explained in my first step, you did the research. You went to Google. You have your Facebook audience done. But when you did the research on Google and you you looked at, you know, uh, divorce frequently asked questions in LA, and you found your competitors answering that. You know what most people do, and that's the biggest mistake, what they do? Mm. They will write about the same thing. They they will mm. repurpose the content, but write about the same thing. Well, what's that going to make you unique? It's not. Why don't you do mm -hmm. something else? You know, like, so people just want to copycat everything. They think, well, if this guy's ranking, I should be ranking, but he's already ranking. You haven't. So what? the only way you can rank is... And to be favored by Google, so Google bot can come and say, well, you know, Adam has done this content, you know, I want to make it better. So what you have to do is make something different than other guys. So your content has to be unique. Even 
If you are ranking, Adam, on the first page of Google, even your content and answers were not unique, out of the 10 results, what do you think people are going to click on if all the content looks the same? So, so I, I got this question asked by a client. He says, well, how do I find content that is unique? And I, I, and I did understand his challenge because the answers are going to be the same by all lawyers. So I said, well, let's come up with a hack. So what we did was when we wrote the blog, everybody was talking about it, but in our content, we added a video, okay? We got him interviewed by one of the famous podcasters and we got him interviewed and we got him added. So when Google searched, when people searched and Google crawled the page, Google showed a video in that. So guess what? Where were people going? Because everybody wants to watch a video then read the content. So that was what mm. we made unique. So that's uniqueness. The other thing is we also added in his headline emojis and emojis do get indexed in Google. So if you have an emoji of an unhappy person, person is more likely to click on that headline with an emoji than a person that all the content that doesn't have emojis. So by doing that, you can stand out in your content. That's what, what I call a unique angle. Mm, no, that's awesome. That, that's a great example. And, and I get it. And so adding the multimedia angle just takes it makes you that much more sticking out on or stick out on to stick out on Google into rank. So awesome. Let's keep going. So, I'm taking notes, man. Yeah. Yeah. So the next thing is now you have your content mapped out. You have your ideas. Now the very first thing is you before you write the content, there is an equation and this is not my equation. I have to give credit to the guy that I learned from, we actually talked about it in the uh, clubhouse, is the guy that I learned this from, Rick Harshaw, and Rick talks about uh, equation, and the equation is called I, E, E, O. The first part of I is an interrupt. In other words, if you do not interrupt the person, he is not going to click on your headline, so your headline needs to be an interrupt. It needs to be something that is going to wake me up. So here I'm going to give you some scientific behavioral changes, psychology. We're going to play the psychology, okay? So mm -hmm. right now we are listening. You know, we are, we are actually doing this podcast. Our brain is in a gamma wave state. We, I'm engaged, you are engaged, we're learning, we're teaching. Our brain waves are in a gamma wave state, okay? But mm -hmm. guess what? Which state are you in when you get up in the morning, you get ready and you sit in the car, you go, and then you drive by. And if I asked you, well, what did you do you remember what you saw there? He says, no, I don't, I don't know. Because you're used to. You just get in the car, you go, you go to the office. You are mm -hmm. in a alpha state. Your brain is in alpha state. It's relaxed. When we are in the alpha state of the brain wave, we are quite relaxed. That means that we are not going to pay attention. So when we are searching what state we are in, we are mostly in an alpha state. Okay, that's the 8 to 12 hertz that people are relaxed, they're searching, there's no concentration. Because guess what? You know, there's too much data. So we are state of alpha. What state mm. do we need to make our headline in? That is called the beta wave. So when we want their brain to be interrupted, okay, we get into a beta wave. And that is the 12 to 30 hertz wave that will say, okay, I'm alert, okay? So if you are at the airport, mm -hmm. you come to Dallas, and I say, Adam, I'm going to pick you up at the at the belt, okay? So you, you come in, you come out, you're waiting for your suitcase to arrive, and somebody says, and you are relaxed. Remember, you're in the alpha state. So somebody says, Adam, guess what is going to happen? You're going to turn around, right? Because you're mm -hmm. going to expect that Kamar is here to pick me up. But Absolutely. it was a false. It was a false alert. 
because I was not there, but there was another Adam. So you turn around and go back to alpha state, right? But if I said, mm-hmm. hey, Adam, and you, and you look at me and says, man, so now it's a beta. You got alerted and that's what you wanted. So the headline that we need to produce in our piece of content is going to go from alert to beta. So that's a very essential thing. If you have a bad headline, even though you're on the first page of Google, people are not clicking. If they're not clicking, nothing is happening. So your headline needs to interrupt a person. So what are the good interrupts? You know, the best way to find an interrupt is I'm going to give you a best hack. So I want you to do, and you can do this with me, and I'll do it on my side, and you do it on your side. Open up Google and type six pack abs in Google search, Mm -hmm. and then go to images. I want you to go to images. Yep. And I'm looking at images. How come I'm not getting credit? Like, this is some shredded images. It's, they're using my body here and my six-pack, and I'm not getting any royalties on this, Kamar. What is this, man? I have all these, like, right. what are they doing? I think that's I, me on the top Google, the top yeah. left uh, under Tone and Chisel Six-Pack, MuscleAndFitness.com. I think they copy and pasted this, my body on this guy's head. What the heck? Yes. So, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you type in, if you, did you type how to get six pack? You will see and type in. All right, how to get a six pack. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you type how to get six pack app and you put mm-hmm. like the word magazine, okay, just put the magazine to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now you will see a bunch of magazines that yep. are showing up. And I'm going to click on one. You you will be seeing something else. But I'll click on something mm-hmm. that would show man's health. And there's a picture of, I don't know who's this uh, guy, but it says six sure. pack abs, six instant weight loss tricks. Okay, that's an alert. Now, when you go to the mall, you know, like you probably don't do that because you have those eight packs, right? But when you go yep. to... When you go to a grocery store and you're waiting in line to pay your bills, there are these magazines in front of you, like The Observer and Men's Health, and says, how to get six-pack in seven days. If you are one of those that needs that, you're definitely going to buy that magazine, right? So a famous digital marketer, his name is Frank Kern. I learned this technique from him. What he says, how to get X in Y how to get six pack in 30 days. So there are many, many ways, but his technique is look at these magazine covers and look at what they're doing. And the copy is pretty much done for you. Why are you overthinking? Just take that, how to get a divorce in 30 days without trying hard. Like I'm giving, you know, lawyers won't talk like this, but I'm just giving you an example. If, If you're a plumber, how to fix your AC in four hours, you know, without trying. Mm-hmm. We actually did a campaign in Dallas here, and that says, your wife is hot. Get the AC fixed. <laughs> it was a billboard. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so it got the attention, right? It's an interrupt. We took the person from alpha to beta. So mm-hmm. the interrupts are very, very important, and those are your headlines. So once you have your headlines defined, now – you, your brain went from alpha to beta. Now you don't want to make the person say, hey, I was joking. Because the mm-hmm. next statement is what you want to do is engage. You want to make them believe that the promise that you are giving is going to be explained if they follow through in the whole article. Mm-hmm. So, so your summary, right after people make this mistake and you don't because you have learned to write for KISS PR, because remember, you have the headline and the summary. Right after that, you define the summary. Your summary mm-hmm. in the press release is your synthesis, what you're going to be doing. Why should they read the content, right? So that's the summary. So that summary needs to tell the user, hey, if you now that you clicked on it, I'm going to give you the best thing you should be reading to look at that. So once the summary is read, the person has started to believe you 
Now you want to take them in the next state, and the next state is called engage, or sorry, educate. The educate state is mm -hmm. where you start explaining, and this is what we talked about last time also. It does not differ. The education was where we are actually writing the body of the content, where we talk about the pain of the client, we talk about how your law firm can help them with the divorce, you also address some frequently asked questions. You put reviews in there. So all that happens in the educate or the body copy. You know, that's, your, that's where you write your 1,800 words, et cetera. But you break it down into small segments. You break it down into sub-headlines. So how much the divorce will cost. That's mm -hmm. the first pain you get rid of it. You know, we will charge you this much. Number two, you know, it will take between seven days to 90 days. You show the procedure. Next thing, why should you ha hire Adam Torres as a divorce attorney? You know, you justify that. And then at the end, you put an offer. If you're interested, click here to book an appointment with me. It's free or just pick up the phone and call me. But right there, because now they are probably not ready. But if you don't do a good job, what you do is right at that offer state, you put 50 reviews that you have got. You know, by the way, I have a five-star rating on Google reviews, so everybody thinks I am a very good attorney for your divorce. You have suspended their belief that if they don't call you, they would be the biggest fool because everybody else is not doing that. And that is what we call a closing, you know, without saying, you know, I'm going to put my hair on fire. <laughs> Come talk to me. You know, you put evidence, your success, your verdicts, your settlements, everything that you've got as a divorce attorney, you put everything there and they're going to click and come to meet you. Now, once you have done that piece of content, the blog, that was only on how to divorce. Mm -hmm. That's the example in the green gummy bear jar, or the young gummy bear jar. Now what you mm -hmm. do, you publish that blog on the website, okay? Mm. And once you have published the blog on the website, the next step you want to do is start putting that blog on LinkedIn, start putting the blog on Twitter, start putting the blog on Facebook, Pinterest, every other channel that you have. And that is where people will start to find you, but that doesn't finish there. There is one last step you must do. Now, people, if you're a new blog and you have put all those social media, how will they find you? Most likely they won't. And Google is going to come and take crawl the blog. So what you want to do is you want to talk to somebody who is an influencer in that area and say, hey, I have a blog. What should I do? And says, well, there's this guy, Adam Boris. He does a great podcast. Why don't you jump on his podcast and talk and explain what you do because he has 3,000 listeners. They listen and you're going to get your blog more awareness. And what you do is you book an appointment with Adam. Adam is going to interview you and your blog is going to get viral. So now you have one blog and Adam has just made it amplified. How do you like that? Man, it just, it just makes sense. And as we go further and further, I mean, one of the main things here, I mean, you get, and you gave some really good, good mechanics here. And uh, this is a good one where people will be able to go back and listen to it and, uh, and take some detailed notes if they weren't. And because you get it very systematically too. And I guess one of the big, like, kind of overarching themes here is like different types of media, different, like differentiating yourself, making the context rich, not just the, or the content rich and with different forms and a multimedia approach. Like, all these things matter. Absolutely. That, that's why a lot of people think I'm going to just write a blog. It's going to be text-based. You know, people, people have a very short uh, attention span. So if you don't put something noteworthy, it's not going to be an interrupt, right? Their brain is not going to be challenged to go from alpha to brain because brain does not want – brain wants to save calories. You know, I learned that mm. from some book. Brain wants to save calories because, and you have to, brain doesn't want to get on a treadmill, right? Brain doesn't mm -hmm. care about six pack abs. It's you that, so what you have to do is you have to make the brain believe, hey, if if mm -hmm. I eat this pizza, I will still get six pack. Brain will believe that, right? 
Mm-hmm. Right? So you have to make those things believable either by images, like Manzel spends a lot of time in photography. Why do you think, why they can't publish an article just by writing the content? Who will read Manzel, right? They have to put mm. evidence. They have to put images. They have to put shots. You know, they have to make it happen. YouTube videos. Movies are done with a trailer. Uh, why does a movie doesn't come out right away? You know, you have to tease people. So you, those are the things p- people have to do. In, even in content marketing. And it's not expensive. All you can do is just, you know, go to some website like Fiverr, get some images done, go to Canva, get your own images. If you're a creative person, if you can't do a video, just give 50 bucks to somebody on Fiverr, get it done. That is money well spent and that will help you immensely. And in episode number three, of this, uh, which is going to be episode number nine, we are going to start to amplify your blog. So now you have a web page, you have a blog in our virtual um, series. The next thing is to take that blog and put it on fire and make it get found. So that's going to be our version three, episode nine. Fantastic. Well, Kamar, I'm excited to get into this episode three and uh, episode one. Again, if you have not watched this yet uh, or listened to it, then I highly suggest going back to episode one and then uh, listen to episode two. Take detailed notes. Episode three, I'm sure Kamar is going to come with it. Just as as always, he's going to bring great questions. He's gonna, we're going to take this case study even further. Kamar, so final words, final question. If, um, if somebody's listening to this right now and they want to learn more about working with KISS PR, first off, who's typically a good fit to work with you and your team, whether it's industry, size of company, whatever you, whatever your metrics are that you found, number one, and number two, what's the best way for people to follow up? The best way is KISSPR.com. They can come to our website and everything else is just very simple. We champion the small businesses, Adam, so while we, we, we don't work with everybody, we can't, we do champion small businesses, and we have packages starting from $500 to all the way up to whatever they want to spend. So depending on how much they want to spend in terms of the budget, they will always get value value from us. And, you know, we are very nimble, very fast, and we are affordable. So we can – and definitely the consulting all the way is free. We educate people. We train them. Our goal is not just to, you know, help them. We want them to learn how to fish. So they can do it with a guru, like uh, Sharif said in the clubhouse that, you know, those days, gurus, you you had to travel like 100 miles to find a guru. Now it's kissvr.com. Just Google it for us. So thanks, Sharif, for that idea. This is I like it. That's a great idea. Well, uh, thank you for coming on the show. As always, it's a pleasure having you on. And to the audience, uh, if you got a lot of value out of this, don't forget, hit the subscribe button. We definitely want you to be a return listener and a return visitor. And uh, Kamar, thanks again for coming on. As always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me again.